Okay, so let's take a look at format statements. In general, when you scroll through a Mastercam post, uh, up at the top are variable initializations. So all of these here are places where we are initializing variables. We're creating them and assigning them an initial value. We do that for numeric variables, then we do it for our strings, and then we have our string select tables, which is a special MP function, and then we get down into the formatting section. So, format statements. You can see here in this generic cost 4x mil post, there are a total of 20 of them. And each one of these format statements essentially defines the numeric rounding for the variable that we are going to assign to it. As a word of caution, don't modify format statement one in general. The only time when you would ever need to modify format statement one is if you needed a higher initial um, calculation precision within the post. So if you were going to output English decimal values to six places, or even like metric decimal to six places, you would need to increase these numbers so that the calculations internally in the post were more accurate. As you read down through here, format statement number two is the default output for positions. So inch positioning four decimal places with any number in the integer column. Metric precision three decimal places with any integer in, uh, allowed in front of the numeric portion. This is decimal absolute four slash three. Whenever you see the four slash three or four slash something or anything slash anything, here's a two place, two slash one place, inch slash metric, inch slash metric. So we've got an inch column and we've got a metric column. If you look at format statement number four, this is generic integer output. You can see that the initial value is a one. We have a space and a zero. Space zero literally means don't output a decimal. That's what the space does here. And zero means no decimal digits. Same thing for the metric, one space zero. So integer output, no decimal, no trailing digits. This one's integer force to leading. That's what this L character does at the end. This is integer force three leading. This is integer force four leading. Then we have our decimals, absolute one, two, three, and one, two, three, four, and five place. We have some additional format statements down here. Decima delta three place, decimal absolute two slash one place. You notice there's a note here for feed rate. De integer forced output, so non-modal. Decimal absolute two three place for a tapping feed rate. And then some formats used for date and time. This one actually has 22 of them. So you've got Decimal, force two leading and two trailing for the time two variable. Integer, force trailing for hour. And integer, force leading and trailing for the minute. And then we've got some down here used for sequence number. So this is how we define the way that we're going to output the numbers. Then down here in the format assignments, the format assignment is where we tell MP which variable uses 
which of these format statements up above. So what can we do with just the format statement itself? Usually not all that much, but let's let's give you a good example. So save that. Pretty simple operation. We have a drill, we have a contour, we have another drill. I'll post it out raw. We're using the OKK HMC Meldus. And here's what our output looks like. Okay, pretty standard. We'll go open up our Meldus post. Do a search for FS2. And I'm going to put the end character after format statement number two. N being non-modal. What I just did was to take away the modality for all of the variables that use format statement number two. If we go down to the variable section, let's do this. Let's make it easier on ourselves. Okay, so we'll collapse the uh, section of the post. These are the format statements themselves, the way that we're going to format the numeric output. These are the format assignment. It tells MP for this variable, use this format statement number. For this variable, use this format statement number. For this variable, use this number. So this column right here with all these different numbers listed tells it which numeric type of formatting to assign to which variable. All I'm going to do is take format statement number two and make the output non-modal. Okay, so here's our original output. And if we make that change and we post it, Here's our new output. Now it's probably not as obvious at first. But what you can see, if you look under the drill cycle, normally modality lets us only output the values that have changed. Making a statement non-modal means that any time an output variable appears on that line, MP is going to force it out. So this after this G80, we probably only had a Z move. But because we've told it to be non-modal, we're actually forcing out every XYZ value that we find on every output line. Let's go back into the post. And let's do this. Let's say for our example that our post is an older post and it outputs the numbers as a seven digit format. The right four digits are the decimal digits down to four places. The left three digits are the integer digits. So we'll change this from a decimal point to a space and from a zero to a three in front of the number. In fact, I only really need to do that here. 
in the first column unless I'm going to post metric. So if you only ever post inch, if you only ever have to worry about posting inch, you can just change the left column. Now, I happen to recommend that you change both of them for being consistent, but you don't necessarily have to if you know, for example, your shop would never post out metric values or vice versa. You're a metric shop, you'd never post out inch. But be that as it may. I changed it to three space four. Now when we post, same exact input file, right? Same exact input file. Look at the formatting here. Now look at the formatting. Oh, you know what I didn't add? I added the T, so we're getting the, oh no, I got the N. So we want LT, leading and trailing zeros. That's what I forgot to add. So three space four NLT. So now every value is expressed as a seven digit number with the last four digits being the decimal digits. The left three being uh, the integer digits. Now, maybe super hard to read, but this also may be what your particular control requires. So let's leave that. Let's take out the N. Now this is leading and trailing, no decimals, but we took off non-modal. So now the output at least is back to being modal, but the values are different, right? Three integer digits followed by four decimal digits with no decimal point. What if we had some really gnarly metric machine? And instead of a decimal, they used a comma. Or maybe they did something weird, like they use a comma in inch mode and they use a decimal in metric mode. Who knows? Let's change it to a comma. The thing that you need to remember is that the format statement only controls the numeric part of the variable. The format assignment assigns the prefix string and or suffix string to the number being output. So you can see we can pretty drastically change the output of this code by just with messing with a few settings here. Okay, all I'm doing is changing format statement number two and I'm modifying the number of integer digits, the number of decimal digits, and or the type of separator that's being output. Okay, so if we go back to zero dot, actually let's change it to zero dot five say that we've got a really precise machine. So we're going to do 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.4. Remember 0 being any integer digit allowed. And let's change this to T only for the trailing. And let's add a plus sign. So what this is going to do for us is this is going to make sure that all of our output that uses format statement number two is signed. So it's going to sign um, positive and negative values. Negative values are always signed, but this is going to sign, this is going to put a plus sign in front of positive numbers and leave the negative sign in front of the negative numbers. And you can also see that we are 
forcing trailing digits. So even if the value has five zeros, we're forcing them out. Let's get rid of the T. Go ahead and save that. So now we're no longer forcing those trailing digits. So we're getting the plus sign for positive numbers. We're getting the negative sign for negative numbers. And everything looks good, but let's say that we were trying to run this on our control and any time that uh, any time we're, we're getting a couple of errors. Any time it encounters a value that has a plus sign before the decimal, it throws an error. So we have to have a zero for any decimal number. And any time it hits uh, a number with a decimal only, with a decimal and no trailing digits it throws an error. So positive values have to have a zero afterwards. Let's go and fix that. So that means for us we need at least one digit in front. And we need to make sure that that digit is forced out. That would be L. By the way, if we have a one in front here and we have a larger number than, you know, nine, it will still output these di those digits. So the one is only really applicable when you're trying to force leading zeros. That's why we can have zero be any number. But since zero is a non-number, you cannot force it out. So that's why if we have 1.5 with an L, this is what we get. Close that debugger, we don't need that. So now, now anytime we have a number that is a decimal only, we're still forcing out that leading integer. You notice down here we have a number that is 10. So it's actually two integer digits. There's a, you know, a number in the in the tens column, but you can see that it actually output 10. It didn't limit us. So the 1 and the 0 and all that is only for leading and trailing zeros. Uh, on the right it does it does round as well. So the decimal portion will round, the integer portion it doesn't round. It will only force uh, leading values if it needs it. So here it's forcing a leading zero. Here it doesn't force anything in front because it's already got values. But we still need a zero after. So that's a case where go back to the documentation here. So that's where we have this special separator character. And the separator character is the little uh, accent symbol. Looks like a little hat. It's usually the number six, shift six on the keyboard. And this says use a decimal, but if the number is a whole number, force out the zero only. So now we go back, we post it, and this allows us, oh, sorry, this actually omits the zero if it's a whole number. 
opposite of what I wanted to do. This says if it's a whole number only, um, force it out as a whole number with no decimal point. What I actually wanted was a was a uh, a T, but that gets a little tricky um, because I think if you only told it to force uh, trailing, that that wouldn't work. I'd have to think about that. How to force the zero if you need it. Z. That's what it was. I knew there was a way to do it. So it's not that other hat symbol. We actually want decimal, decimal. It is the Z character. And the Z tells it um, that when it's a whole number, you still need to force, save that. Oops. Got, missed it. Save it. Z. Okay. Repost. That's better. So now this ensures that any decimal point is surrounded by a numeric character on the left and right. We either have a leading zero or we have a trailing zero for anything that uses format statement number two. In addition, we also have uh, signed the output. So positive is denoted with the plus sign, negative as always is denoted with the minus sign. And we've also gone down to as many as five decimal digits for the output. I'm going to go ahead and break this video. Um, we're getting to the end of class. We had a little bit of a delay when we were talking about some follow-up stuff. Kind of got sidetracked a little bit. So we'll, we'll probably run class just a little bit late tonight. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and break this video here.